might just just sort of talk about the San Nita Derby and and um, Taba. What you know, what your expectation was going in off just one maiden win to San Nita Derby, and and then describe the race. Well, I mean, knowing knowing the talent that he had, I, I knew he had you know, that that kind of talent. Uh, but you know, to go from three quarters of a mile in a maiden race to to a mile and eighth in a Grade One. You know, although the the the, the field was short, uh, the the talent in there was was very strong. So, but I knew he had that kind of ability. I did, and I I figured well, he's probably got the foundation to get a mile, and maybe his uh, his class could uh, could get him the rest of the way. You know, if we were if we were good enough to you know to be within a you know striking distance heading for home. But but what really surprised me was was uh, the way he finished. I mean, not only did he get the mile in ATF got it uh, with much more much more left in there i think that if he was if the race would have gone on a little further he certainly would have looked like he was going to draw away and win by further so that really impressed me and he gave me the you know the belief that i think you know he should be able to get the mile and a quarter off off just two races uh, which is hard to, to even put into your and think about but uh, wow he's just a so you took a pretty lightly raced horse into the Kentucky Derby a few years ago with Justify. How does he compare to Justify? And also, how do you deal with the fact that you have such an inexperienced horse in such a big venue with so many people and distractions? But, you know, I actually can compare him somewhat. Uh, the, you know, of course, they're both extremely talented, uh, although Justify was, was, was bigger. It was a bigger cult. Uh, but this is a nice size horse as well. You know, he's got he's got a way of 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 and the way he covers ground is so fluid. Balance is so nice, uh, a lot like Justify. And his cruising speed is high. This this colt is actually uh, quicker than I than I was expecting. You know, I didn't ride him first time out. Johnny Velasquez rode him first time out. And although he was on the lead, you know, he had to kind of ride him out of there to get him there with his first time. Uh, the Derby Day, he left there with with run on his mind. If he'd had a little more foundation, probably would have could have been a little braver with him and and just set right off the pace and probably like you know late second. Uh, but being he'd only run the one time, I thought, well, I'll just I'll let Messier go up there with see if I can run at him. Not only did that, he did that more. Uh, as far as it, you look, I mean, he's only run twice. I, I don't know what. You know what? You know that day is a crazy day. Some of some very well, and, and some of them who have ran, who have ran three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, uh, don't handle it at all on that day. But, you know, it's just a each individual is it, just we ha we have to wait and see. I, I don't know how he's he's pretty intelligent. He's a smart horse, although he you know he he feels good. I remember Santa Anita Derby day. He was he was playing in the post parade, and but in a good way. Uh, the Hopefully the crowd won't bother him, and if, if that's the case, you just hope for you know a good clean break. And if I could get him into a nice happy rhythm early on in a good comfortable place uh, where he doesn't have to overcome a whole lot, uh, got the kind of ability to, to pull it all. For those of us here in Kentucky who maybe haven't got to uh, meet Tim Yakteen at all or don't know much about him, I was wondering if you might could provide any insight into him, into his personality or, or methods or what we can expect uh, from Tim? Oh, he's a lovely man. A really, really classy gentleman. I love riding for Tim. Uh, he, uh, he's one of those guys, man, you just, you just feel good. You feel confident when you ride for him. His horses always look great. They're always in great condition. Uh, uh, we've been blessed together me and tim we, we've won a, a couple of grade ones together uh with a really good sprinter he had a few years back uh, so we've got some history together and i'm, I'm happy to be riding for him and, and like i said he's when you meet him you'll see he's just he's just uh he's an open book he's a really good guy Talk about a late bloomer or whatever i mean you're enjoying some of your best days later in your career do you have your arms around that a little bit just how unique this position is i think if you win uh on the seventh you would be the oldest jockey to win the kentucky derby <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, there's something to taking care of yourself. Uh, early on in my career, I, I really got into physical fitness at, at a very young age and made it a way of life, and I've kept up with it ever since. As a matter of fact, I'm heading to the Derby. It doesn't pop me to the 
get get done talking here. Uh, I feel great. You know, I, I've been, you know, uh, except for 1998 when I when I broke my back, I've been, you know, really really healthy. I, I stayed. The Lord's willing, we stay that way. Uh, I feel like I, I like I'm 30 years old, and and then when you get the opportunity to ride by, by the kind of horses uh, that I've been blessed to to have ridden here the last few years, uh, like Justify now. Hey, but man, it, it, it'll keep you young. Mike, this is EJ Clark from the Kentucky Winter Circle Radio Show and Podcast out of Louisville. Thanks for joining us today. When you when you look at Taba's just two races, and you talked about it already, but does this, do you think, is this going to take, you've been so great with getting on horses the one time or, you know, and, and getting everything out of them, the best out of them. Is this going to take more of, of your unique skills with this horse? You made a strong case about going from six furlongs to mile and an eighth and being impressive and uh, triple digit buyers and that kind of thing. But uh, still, uh, you know, there's only two races going in. We know that Leonidas pulled it off back in 1883. That was a 19th century. So it's, it's been a long time, but uh, you, uh, you have shown the ability to have that connection with the horse. Have you thought about that? Or is, it, is that an, an important aspect that you will bring into the Kentucky Derby? Well, I'm certainly hoping it, it is. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, my job is, is to try and make this as easy as possible for him. Uh, you know, you just like I said before, you with a young horse like this, you just hope you get away well. You know, if I can find him, you know, if I can put him in a place where where he's not getting you know knocked around or having to take too much kickback or or, or you know having to make up you know, too much ground, if we can put them in a good, happy place, it'll certainly make it a lot easier. And, and that's, that's going to be my job is to try and find that place where I feel that he's, he's well within himself, but he's also in a place where, where, when it's time, you know, I can, I can cut him loose and, and, and make it as smooth as possible and not have to stop and start and get, get the, you know, jostle around. So you just hope, you hope for a good break, but what, what's good about him though, is he has that, that that kind of speed uh if he gets away running well i i see him up in the somewhere up in the first flight you know anywhere from from the first one to, to about fifth six you know right right in there the first flight of horses is that because he's got that kind of cruising speed Seth. thank you mike good morning uh i'm curious you know experience counts and uh relate back to, to your first derby and, and when you showed up and over time, has the experience changed? You hear from jockeys, trainers, and owners, how emotional it is coming in uh, through the tunnel and onto the track. How has, if it has, your experience at the derby changed at all over the years? It, it, it changes. I mean, you learn to learn to stay in the moment and not, not let everything get ahead of you. You'll start riding that race. Uh, you know, a month out, if you know you already got one that's going in and, and you'll, by the time you get to race day, well, you're, you're exhausted. You learn to kind of pace yourself, stay in the moment. Uh, but some things don't change that, that, that emotional part that coming through that tunnel and you're hearing that song, uh, still puts a big old lump in my throat and, and, uh, I'm excited to be there. Uh, you know, the wonderful thing about, about experience that it, it teaches you, like I said, to stay in the moment, to slow things down, but I think uh, I'm able to do a lot of that now, and that certainly helps in these in these high pressure situations. Uh, but but there's just nothing like the Derby. If, if if you ain't a little nervous and you don't have goosebumps, well then something's wrong with you. Mike, were, how old were you when you came? Pine Circle was your first Derby event, was it? I couldn't hear the answer. You were breaking up. I see. It was in 1984. Yeah, uh, so it was. Yeah, it was so, Pine Circle. Yeah. I think you finished. Six, maybe about that. I did. I finished sixth, I believe. Did you think that was like winning? <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, just you've uh, been at Oakland Park. So excited to be riding the Derby. I, I'd have went around again if I if I had to. That's how <laughs> we were. So, we were big running. I going so I could catch up. <laughs> so two years later, Bill Shoebaker um, becomes the oldest jockey to win the Derby. Did you think? I'm thinking he was like 54, 56. I'm sure somebody on the call knows exactly. But 
did you think, man, that is an old man? <laughs> when you were that young back then, when you're thinking about Bill Shoemaker winning the Derby. No, oh, those guys were so great, man. It, you just didn't even think about their age in all that you were in the same room with them. That's how that's how wonderful those guys were and how great they were. Uh, he certainly didn't ride that race like a 54-year-old. He rode just a, probably one of the most brilliant races you could possibly ride to win that race. And it, it took all that experience and all that time that he he had spent riding the race years before to get that done. And, and there's something to experience, and I think, in everything you do in life. Yeah, Mike, do you have this long relationship with, with Bob Baffert? Do you view this as Bob's horse or Tim's horse? How do you how do you view that? Well, it's Tim's now. <laughs> you know, John, and now he you know he handed him over to Tim, and now it's Tim's horse. So, you know, although uh, you know you'll probably hear a, a whole lot of about like this, you know, coming up into the Derby, but it's not uncommon for for a horse to move barns, um, as it's not uncommon for for you know to change riders at the last minute as well. I mean, sometimes you, sometimes you get a horse early on and then, and I know that sometimes when I ride a horse early on, sometimes the first time's the best time, you know, the first, you know, you ride them. And uh, so it just all depends. It, it's like, uh, I always tell people, it, it, it's just like people. It's like meeting people. Sometimes the first time you meet someone's the best time. And sometimes it takes it time to get to know one. And, and the more you get to know them, the better you like them. So it just, it just all depends. The idea with with your horse at that moment at that time and, and get them in a, a happy place or a happy place for a horse well they're going to perform for you thanks mike you um also came up under charlie whittingham i think before you went to work for for bob it with tim yak team whose influence do you see or do you see a hybrid or do you see tim yak team is just tim yak team Charlie Whittingham, you know, I was back east back in the beginning a bit. I was you know, back in New York. So I didn't get to California until 2000. But, uh, you know, so I wasn't, uh, uh, I, of course, we all knew who Charlie Whittingham was. It to ride for him uh, very much. And, and Tim had already gone out of, on his own whenever I got him out to California. He had just started out on his own. He he might have still been with Bob maybe the first year, and then he 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 gone out on his own. Uh but but Tim's his own unique guy as well. I mean, he he he. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's taking what he's learned from from Mr. Wigham and and Baffert and, and combined it with what what he feels and it 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 makes you who you are. It, it's a, it's like a rider. I mean, I've taken, you know, I've learned so much from so many great great riders, and and there's a, there's a little part of all of them in me. You know, talk about the field, Mike. As far as we know, more or less, maybe the the bottom. The 20 and 19 horses, we're not sure of yet, but we got an idea of how the, you know, just your thoughts on the field when you look across. And have you really been following all those other preps around the country? Seeing yeah, who's I, winning what? I follow all of them. Yeah, very competitive field this year. I mean, each horse that 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 has won the major prep races look really good coming in the race. Uh, they all seem to... To, to the best part of the races was all at the end. You know, you didn't you didn't seem to see anybody on 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 fumes at the end. You know, just getting there, hanging on. I mean, the the top contenders have really finished up well in their last preps and have ran very very good. Uh, and then you get the horses that that have, that have finished right around them. I mean, it, it it's gonna they could all jump up at any time um, and just run a huge race. You know, like Messier, I mean, he could come right back and. and run a race at the uh, like a monster i mean it, it's so it's, it's a wide open race this is a really good derby this year really tough jason has a question yeah mike as you know the 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 days leading up to the derby it can be kind of a, a of a circus back there at churchill the the media and obligations and all that kind of thing i i wonder what kind of advice if any you might give tim given this is going to be his first time going through all of that and um, the, the surroundings and all the, the, the sidebars, I guess, with, with, with Bob and, and all of that, uh, um, what kind of advice you might give a guy going through this for the first time? Well, although it's his first time, I mean, he, you wouldn't think so. At least me knowing Tim going into this, this derby, it's not to me, it's not like it's his first time there. He's been involved with, you know, with some other horses that, that have come into the derby before. So he, I mean, he knows what it's like, uh, 
you know, and he, he's, he, I'm sure he's been told by, by a lot of his peers as well, man, just go and enjoy it. Have fun, stay in the moment, have a good time with it because this is what it's all about. I mean, this is what we all work so hard for. And, you know, this is our dream is to, to be able to compete in, in America's horse race at the Kentucky Derby. And so he's going to enjoy it. He's going to have a good time. He, he's, he, although it's his, technically, I guess you'd say it's his first horse in the Derby, but really he, he's been around long enough. I'm not, I think he'll be great. The other race, certainly in America, we talk about the post position at the Kentucky Derby um, with the t- potential 20 horses. And there was the two gates. Now there's the one gate, but it's still a 20 horse field potentially. I'm curious, you've been there a number of times. If you had your dream spot in the gate, where would that be? Well, with the old gate, you know, it was tricky. You know, you certainly didn't want to be uh, in the one hole or the two or the three unless you were extremely fast, because as you well know, I mean, you, you literally had to come out of the gate and head to the right just to even get around the, the rail there. Uh, with this new gate, it makes it a whole lot different. Uh, I think it plays much fair for the horses that are drawn down to the inside and, and the horses who are drawn to the extreme outside. You know, as before, man, you were literally on the outside fence. It's not so much that way now. Uh, it gives everybody a fair shot, but you know, it, the draws to me, it's not necessarily what number it's, it's the competition around you. It, it's the way the race is going to shape up. I think you, you see how a race is going to shape up from the draw and you don't know that until they draw is the speed going to draw to the inside of me. Am I going to be in between the speed? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on the outside of the speed. Uh, you know, who's the closers where they're drawing. And so it, even though it's a mile and a quarter and it's, it's, you think that you have time, you know, for all this, it's still very important to be able to get into a really great position really early, really quick on, because then you get right into a rhythm and you're in a good spot and, you know, your horse will get the, will get the distance because as you well know, the, the Derby is a tough race, man. It, it's, it's, it's a mile and a quarter, but it's run hard from the word go. So it just depends where, where, where my competition draws is where I'd like to be, but I mean, you don't ever want to be too far in or too far out, you know, just somewhere right in the middle is always kind of the sweet spot. 